Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm JB and today I'm going to show you how to create an additional volume on macOS so that you can install Catalina to it. macOS Catalina was released on the 7th of October and one of the major changes that it brings to the system is that it will no longer support 32-bit apps. The only apps that it will now support would be 64-bit. Now there's a way that you can check um, what bit your applications are and you can do this by doing a search for system information and once you get into system information make sure that you scroll down to the, so the software the software menu and then click on application and as you can see on the bottom right it will start loading and if you just bring this down you will see a column for 64-bit Intel. Now, if we click on this, you'll see that I've got about four applications or programs that are not 64-bit, and these are only 32-bit. If I decide to upgrade my current macOS, which is Mojave, to Catalina, these four programs will not work. And to be honest with you, I need two of these. I need two of these programs. So that's the reason why I've decided not to upgrade to Catalina just yet. I'm just going to wait until some of the developers manage to update their apps to 64-bit. And this is the reason as well I'm doing this video because I'm going to be using Catalina as a on a diff on a on a on the same on the same drive but on a different volume. Right. So I'm going to close this down. And now what we'll need for this is once again, you need the installer for Catalina. I've already got the installer in my application folder because I got it from the app store. So all you need to do is to go into the app store with your Apple ID, download the installer and it will, it will um, save in your application folder. And then once you do that, we will then need to do a search for disk utility. So you want to go into disk utility and um, you will come to this page here. Now, what you need to do is to click on a plus sign as we're looking to add another volume. And by default, since I believe macOS Sierra, the file system format is now APFS. And that's exactly what we need for this. So when you click on a plus sign, it will by default um, get you to do APFS. But that also depends on um, the type of Mac that you have. Because for example, APFS by default is supported on SSDs. If you still got a hard disk drive, then it will just um, install Catalina as a Mac OS extended. And if I, before I continue with this, if I quickly show you the um, general requirements and Mac hardware requirements, you'll see that you need at least four gig of RAM to install Catalina. It will take about 12.5 gig of storage, but that's what it will need to, to install on your machine. So make sure you've got these two things here. And um, the upgrade or the installation, well, mainly the upgrade, if you're upgrading, then you need to be on at least El Capitan and, and, and later, which is 10.11.5 or later and also here is the list of all the Macs that are supported for Catalina so unfortunately if your Mac is not on this list you won't be able to um, do an installation or a um, upgrade to, to Catalina so now if we go back to disk utility what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this Mac OS 1015 and I will go ahead and just add it. Now, one thing that I also want to mention is it, what APFS does is it will share the current space that you have that, I, that you have on your current operating system. So as you can see at the moment, I'm using 89 plus 16, uh, 16 gig and I've got a 144 gig free. And it will be exactly the same thing on the new volume. You know, so the free space that's available is going to be sh so the free space that's available is going to be shared directly on the new volume. 
So that's the only thing that you need to, to remember, you know? So whatever free space you have on your current OS, it will also take it for um, the new one. So now that once this volume is installed, all you need to do now is if we go back into Finder and we go into the docu uh, application folder, if I now run this and I go to continue, you know, accept all the terms and conditions and stuff like that. Yeah, we agree. Now you get to this page here and it will ask you to show the disks that are available. Now we just created a brand new volume. So if I do show all disks, you will now see that this is now available as well. The new volume that I just created is now available. So make sure that you click on that because if you don't and you go into, into your, into this one, which is my current system, it will do an upgrade, but this will do a brand new installation onto your machine. So I'm now going to click install. Just going to use my fingerprint there and off we go. It will start to do the installation. Now, what I will do is I will skip the video onto the next section and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Right guys, so the installation is going to now do a reboot and what it, what it will do is it will carry on with the installation um, of the system. Now what I'll do is I will carry on with the installation. I'm gonna do another video to show you what happens once it does restart. Hey guys, so the Mac currently restarted. This is now what it's doing. It's still going through its installation. I think it will surely soon give me a um, estimated time. So I'm just waiting for that to come up and then I'll let you know exactly what's going on. So now it's just restarting again. You know, excuse me for the um, camera quality. I haven't got the best camera just yet. I'm still using my iPhone 8 Plus, but eventually with time, you know, I'll have better equipment. But I just wanna share my experience with you so that um, if you have any problems or any issues, you can always send me a comment or a message and I can help you. But this is just to show you the experience of what exactly what happens when you create a new volume and then you install macOS on it. So this is now the second reboot. And I'm pretty sure now there will be a timer which will tell me how long it's going to take before it completes the installation of the new volume. Right, there we go. That's the estimated time. So I will be back once uh, we get past this screen. Thanks. Hey guys, so as you can see, I've managed to, the installation has managed to complete. It's now taking me to the work on screen for Catalina. So I'm just Mac going- OS contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to- I'm just going to go over and continue with the setup. Let's just do that, continue. Right, it's just thinking about it. Let's do continue again. Let's go for continue, don't transfer anything. I agree, yes. Right, on here I'm just going to create a username. On it, JB. Create a password. All right, that's going in. That's just a new Find My application. Let's just set that up. 
Let's just say yes for now. Continue. Do this later. I don't really use Siri that much, so I'm going to take that off. Do next. And I will set all this up later. Now, once you get to this screen, we'll just quickly set up your Mac and it should take us right to the desktop. There you go. And here we are. Catalina has been installed. Now, the reason why you're seeing this message here is because on my Mojave volume is currently using File Vault for encryption. So it's asking whether I want to unlock the disk. We're not going to do that just yet. So I'm going to cancel this. And. Okay. Right. Right, now what I will do is I will switch back onto my Mac and um, I will continue with the video. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back. As you can see, Catalina has been installed in the volume that we created. And if we do a quick search for disk utility, you will now see that the volume is right there with the data on it as well. And it's still using, so it's using the free space that I have um, available from the other volume as well which is my Mojave one everything has been installed and um, what you also need to do from here is because now now that you have two volumes you need to make up your mind on which one you want it to be the startup default so at the moment if we check startup disk by going to system preferences you'll see that at the moment 1015 which is Catalina is my default startup disk so whenever I start my Mac it will always come here now you can change that setting on here you can easily change that setting on here if you want or what you can do is when you shut down your Mac and then you click on the power button as soon as the as soon as the, as soon as the power comes on just hold down the option key which is the key that is next to the left hand side um, command key if you hold down that button, what will happen is it will present you with um, an option of which volume you want to boot into. So you could, you could either do you could either do that every time you, you want to start up, or you can just come on system preferences and choose which one you want to access. That's an option that you can do as well. And another thing, if we go back to disk utility, this drive which is my current um, drive can also be accessed. Now, because it's encrypted, if I hit on mount, it's gonna ask me for the password for this drive or the recovery key for this drive. If I type in my password on here, there you go. As you can see, it's now mounted. And then if I come here and I go into Actually, that's not the right one. Hold on. Let me just check something. Yeah, if I come into here, so this is actually my drive. So yeah, this is my this is my Mojave drive. It's now mounted. So if I go into users, JB, all my data is on here. Yeah, all my data is on here, so it's accessible. So that's how you can do. So that's how you can also um, get your current drive to show up its information. If it's not encrypted it should show up straight away or if it doesn't it's going to ask for a password and then once you type in the password you'll be able to access that so yeah that is pretty much is it um thank you for watching my video once again there'll be much more content coming over the next couple of days weeks and months hit the like button subscribe button leave some comments opinions and questions that you have and um, i'll be more than happy to have a look at everything but thank you so much until next time, peace.